Hi! If you're thinking of getting into tech space this 2023, this video is definitely for you. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chisong and I'm a software engineer and YouTuber based in Lagos, Nigeria. And if you're not new, good to have you back. So today we're going to be talking about a very, very interesting topic, how to get into the tech space this year. Now, before we even start talking about how to get into tech space, the first thing I would like to address is the myths people have about being in the tech space. First one is making money immediately get into the tech space. Tech has money, right? I think people say tech is the new oil, which is true. Tech has money, but you're not going to make money immediately. That's something I want to debunk. Tech requires a lot of hard work. Tech requires a lot of dedication and consistency for it to start seeing results, right? So um, it's not a get rich quick scheme, but rather it's something that you have to dedicate a lot of time to keep at it. You're going to start making a whole lot of money from your tech skills. Our um, myth I'd like to debunk is the fact that you need a computer science degree, a CS degree, or an engineering degree to start a tech career. I have a lot of friends, a lot of friends that do not have CS degrees that are into the tech space. So this is your motivation to start. I don't care if you studied nursing, if you studied agriculture, if you studied library and information science, there's a spot for you in the tech space. The only thing you need to know how to be able to do is to solve problems. The fact it's called like technology means that there's a certain kind of problem solving that is involved, right? So you need to be able to solve problems as much as possible. You do not need a CS degree. Another myth is working in tech is very easy. As much as there's money in tech, people think that it's very easy to do like this, right? But I would say tech is very, very challenging because you, you're, you're going to be meeting tight deadlines. You are going to be be learning a lot right let's say you learn a skill now tomorrow that skill gets outdated and you need to learn it all over again right this space is very competitive your skills today will not be your skills tomorrow so you literally have to be upskilling every single minute of the day right so you can keep staying relevant that myth is you only need online courses right um it's very easy to go online and see things that you can learn like let's say i want to be a front-end engineer i can go online and see front-end engineering frameworks but that's not everything that you need right you need to learn how to build things from scratch you need to learn how to collaborate with people i mean it involves a lot of things but these are the various myths i'm trying to break down before we get into the real part of this video tech is not just for guys tech is for both men and women men and women have equal opportunities in the tech space it depends on how you as a lady can present yourself for those jobs for those um projects and for those skills that you want to learn so a myth that tech is just for guys should be debunked today right so yeah and lastly the fact that people are um expressing for some certain kind of layoffs in the tech industry doesn't mean that you don't have like an advantage what you are your your skills right if your company doesn't make you so if they lay you off today you carry your skills to somewhere else to give value so if layoffs happen in the tech space it doesn't mean that layoffs happen in the finance department or in the marketing department or in the food industry tech is highly represented in all these industries right so if you're saying oh i don't think i want to learn your tech skill i mean they're laying people off right that shouldn't be your thoughts your skills make you and the fact that you can find a place to um contribute your skills to that's what makes you a tech person you're very versatile and you're very dynamic so that shouldn't discourage you but only the myths of being in tech space we'll start with how you can start step one figure out what you want to do figure out where your passion lies some people say passion can only get you um far but it cannot really complete the race. And I believe that, right? But try to find out what your passion is about, figure out who you are and what you love doing. Tech is divided into two phases. We have the coding and the non-coding. So figure out if you're someone that loves to do technical things or you're someone that loves managing teams or you're someone that even loves design, right? If you're coming into the tech space, you do not need to learn how to code. There are a couple of non-coding roles that you can do 
which I'll be talking about in another video. So if you want to be a mobile developer, you just love the way apps look on Play Store or on Apple Store. Yeah, you can do that. You can develop that. I mean, I was an Android developer. I have an app on Play Store. And if you love numbers, if you love mathematical stuff, you can go into the data field. And if you love managing people, managing projects, managing products, there's project management, there's product management, there's technical writing. I mean, whatever you feel that you're passionate about, there's definitely, definitely a space in the tech industry for you. So now that you've figured out the kind of skills that you would like to learn and how you'd like to learn them, it's time to start doing research, right? And nobody's going to do the research that will benefit you the way you do your own research. So it's time to start researching on this field. You're going to be watching videos on YouTube, you're going to be reading articles, you're going to be connecting with people that are already in that field. Let's say you want to be a data engineer, for instance, you're going to be connecting with data engineers on LinkedIn, on Twitter. I mean, anywhere that you find someone that has a similar career prospect as you, you have to be connected with that person. So you, you steadily get information on what these fields require. So you're going to be making sure that the surface area of your knowledge is always increasing, right? You're knowing a lot about about this field what it entails you're doing like a 360 review of what this field entails and when you're done doing that research it's time to start creating step three a study plan yes I said a study plan tech is school the fact that you're self-taught doesn't mean that you do not need a study plan the fact that you're probably going to a boot camp I mean even if you go to a boot camp you're going to see um, a curriculum for you to follow so you need a plan Without a plan, you're definitely going to fail. Research about roadmaps. There's this website that has like roadmaps for each field in tech. Research, do, do like your roadmap research, get a book, study and write that, okay, in this week I'm going to study this, this week I'm going to study this, this week I'm going to do this. And it gives you like a very structured plan to follow. But that doesn't mean that everything is going to be smooth. That doesn't mean that you're going to fall into like pitfalls. You're going to be, there are going to be times where you're going to like take breaks, or just be confused and that's that's really okay right so create a plan i always advise people to create a plan use roadmaps and always try to ask questions online in a forum or in a community so you have like a better plan moving forward start doing things that would make your learning more alive right for me if i want to learn something and i finish learning the basics i will try to learn how to do those things i will try to practice on my own I'll try to look for real life scenarios, right? And repeat those things that I've learned. That is what I mean by when I say bring your learning to life, right? There's so much that you can learn, but if you don't utilize those things in building some certain kind of projects or little things, they won't come alive, right? They will just be lying dormant in your brain. And two, try to look for a mentor, try to look for someone that can guide you if you can. I mean, <clears throat> These days, mentorship is something that is not really so easy to come by. But try to look for a mentor. I think I'll be doing a video where I will teach you guys how to approach someone for mentorship, right? The right way. But try to look for a mentor. Try to um, ask for mentorship. It gives you, it kind of skyrockets you, right? From a place of, oh, I don't know how to do this. To a place of, oh, I think I figure out how to do these things. Step five, join a community. Um, being a community of like-minded people helps you think, it helps you progress in the things that you're trying to learn. So if I'm in the community of front-end engineers that use Vue.js as a framework, best believe that I'm going to learn Vue.js like, like this because people are randomly talking about different things about Vue.js and I'm like, oh, I use that, oh, I haven't used that. So it gives you being in a space of like-minded people gives you the opportunity to grow, gives you the opportunity to be to network, you're networking with other people, they're sending job opportunities to you, they're helping you fix your bugs. I mean, it skyrockets you as fast as a mentorship would. So join a community, join a community of like-minded people, be very intentional of the kind of community you join. And when you do that, make sure that you're growing in that community. The community might be physical, the community might be online, but also make sure that you're growing no matter what. Lastly, and most importantly, work on personal projects start building start building <laughs> i can never overemphasize this the more you build the more your learning comes alive i remember the time where i was learning android development and um i was learning a lot of things right i finished 
everything at that point that android had to talk about like i knew everything from navigation to um firebase storage i mean all those couple of things but i knew that what i was learning wasn't sticking because i haven't used them before so trying to build projects it doesn't have to be something big it doesn't have to be um something so so complex right but try to as, as much as you learn try to use that knowledge to build the project it really helps people say this and it sounds cliche but it actually really helps you learn it helps that knowledge stick the more you learn the more you're confident about what you know and with that confidence you can use it to learn all that stuff that you need to learn with your tech journey you're going to feel like this thing is not for you and you're going to feel like quitting which is normal but don't don't let that get you let that be a form of motivation you can take breaks you can do different things and still come back to what you're learning if you're watching this don't give up on your tech journey i hope this video has helped you and i want to hear your thoughts in the comment section if you're going to start your tech journey or if you've already started your tech journey share your struggles so that other people can learn from you and feel inspired as well i'll see you guys in the next video don't forget to like subscribe and comment Bye!